Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Thursday. It's been a slow news week. That's why I haven't really done um, a live stream. Hopefully, there'll be more to talk about tomorrow. Um, it hasn't been a whole lot that's been going viral, but I did want to come on here and talk about the Tyler situation. I've been trying to hold off on this conversation for a while. It's been going on literally for months, and I thought that eventually common sense would prevail, but obviously common sense is not so common, okay? So once again, the singer Tyler, who's from South Africa, is going viral because she was on The Breakfast Club. So once again, Charlemagne the T, okay, was being messy, and he wanted to bring up her whole colored controversy. So before we even get into the whole Breakfast Club thing, let's go ahead and rewind that back. Let's go back to the beginning of how all this controversy with Tyla first started. So Tyla is a beautiful, young, gorgeous woman from South Africa. Um, she is of Indian, Zulu, Mauritian, and Irish descent, okay? So she has a lot of admixtures in her. And so a few months ago, her and Travis Scott, they took a picture together and a lot of African-Americans were on the picture and they were saying, oh, Travis Scott is finally with a black woman because we know Travis Scott has mainly been known for dating white women like Kylie Jenner and others. So a lot of, you know, South Africans came on the post and they were like, no, Tyla is not black. Tyla is colored. And so that had sparked the first debate, okay? This was a few months ago, so I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys this video clip as a refresher. Another day of Americans trying to victimize themselves. Let's get into it. So superstar Tyler released a remix for her global hit Water with Travis Scott, and this unleashed the floodgates of race discourse, specifically around the term colored. Tyler identifies as colored and has worn that proudly, but Americans have pushed back against this because of the historical meaning of the term colored in the US. All right, so you guys just watched that clip. So after that went viral, um, Tyla was then interviewed a few weeks later. She was interviewed a few weeks later on 97.9 The Beat. And during that interview, Tyla said that she was colored and Shea Butter Twitter lost their shit. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this interview right here. I mean, like in South Africa, my race is called colored and it's a very stressful term to use in America because I know it's a derogatory term. Right. But I mean, that's what we are called right. in South Africa. Right. All right. So you guys just heard what she had to say, and I think she explained it well. But of course, people were still upset. Um, you know, they were accusing her of denying her blackness and, you know, all this crazy stuff. Maybe colored is what they call the black people before we got rights in this country. <laughs> you saying she's colored, not black, baby. That's why everybody's eating you up right now. The world is bigger than you. Black Americans are not the main characters everywhere. The world is not a Tyler Perry movie. This is Tyler's movie. And in Tyler's movie, she identifies as a colored. Be colored is what they call the black people before we got rights in this country. Ma'am, in South Africa, she's colored. And Tyler did post the video around last year she was wearing like um black and white beads with a black and white outfit doing her hair she said that she's colored so for you to say that she's not colored when she clearly called herself colored it's um i don't know what and then you say it's miseducation towards us towards us colored <laughs> yo bruh like you saying that we should have done our research while well, you should have gone to Tyler's page and checked that video. She still has it on her page. She did say most that she's colored. So you are the one that was supposed to do research and stop talking too much. Keep quiet if you don't know what to say, my sister. And it's not Tila, it's Tyler. Understand? Thank you. So I think everyone is aware with the whole Tyler situation where she identifies as colored and everyone is like, no, she's black. But like, why once every two years do colored people have to defend their culture? Because now there's this narrative going around that colored people were just a race created by the apartheid government and we actually are black people. 
I'm not a black person. I don't identify as a black person. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with black people. I'm just saying that I don't see myself as a black person. The ANC doesn't see me as a black person because I'm not given the opportunities of the BEE um, laws. So why do we have to defend ourselves? Why can't I be proudly coloured? And this is the racism that I think that we are facing in South Africa today because we are actually being oppressed to be told time and time again that no, you guys don't exist. This isn't a real culture. You guys just made it up or it's just a made up thing. Every single year or every single two years, we have to defend ourselves. Like, does it even make sense to you? Do you feel oppressed as a colored person hearing all of this all the time? So that caused a lot of controversy. So since then, Tyler has literally been walking on eggshells when it comes to this whole colored debate, this whole black debate. She really doesn't want to get in it again because people have been dragging her about this for months. And she's literally just being herself. So today, Charlemagne decided to be messy and Peter Rosenberg from um, Hot 97 confirmed that there are questions that Tyler and her peoples did not want her asked and Charlemagne was being messy. So I'm gonna show you guys the Breakfast Club clip and then Peter Rosenberg talking about this on Twitter. So y'all go ahead and check this out. School me on these debates that they be having about your identity as a South African colored person. What, is, what does that even mean? Oh, I like that. We keeping that in the interview, too. <laughs> I like when they talk from the back and say we can't. I like that. I like the character. That's good. That's even better. All right, Tyler. It wasn't that bad, was it? No. No? No. Good? I'm, I'm good. What, why are you guys oh, we got some more because the label, time, I'm I'm with you. I want you to know this for other interviews, right? Okay. When they go in and they tell like the uh, the interviewers what to say and what not to say, this and that, that's what makes it awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Are you awkward? No. I'm not awkward. Mm -hmm. You want to see all the like questions they told us not to ask? Leave her alone, man. Stop <laughs> this it. This one must leave the room. Stop it. My <laughs> goodness. This one must go. <laughs> goodness. No, this is the worst ever working with him. I work with him every day. Yeah. Yo, I'm in Vegas right now for the uh, Geronte Davis fight, but I had to say one thing. There's no one else going to say it. So even though I know no one ever wants me to be the person to say things, no one else says anything. So I'm going to say it. I don't know if you've seen the video going around of... Um, Charlemagne blindsiding Tyla with questions about a variety of topics and just saying mean things, being vulgar to her the second the interview started, just being nasty and a bully as he often can be. I just want to let you know why that is. Um, we were given a list uh, of things she did or did not want to talk about, which is not unusual. And you can decide what you know how much you care about avoiding those topics. And maybe you might say, hey, you know what? If they don't want to talk about this, we're not going to do the interview. Um, in this case, obviously, they said yes to doing the interview. And then I know this because I've seen the list. He then went down the list and intentionally blindsided her about every single topic that they said she hoped not to talk about. Everyone's making about one thing, but it's a multitude of topics that he brought up that were on that list. And he, if you see the video, he took pride in sticking it to the label and did that, not worrying about how it made Tyla feel, who is a young artist who's already apprehensive and uncomfortable, and made this experience miserable and made, you know, it made it bad for other people who would like to interview her um, because that's the kind of guy he is. But he sits on a throne and he calls himself a god. So, I mean, he's obviously a big man. All right, so you guys just saw that. And so Tyla, you know, being young, she turned around and she looked at her PR like, you know, what is he doing? He's not supposed to ask this. So then a lot of people got mad and said, once again, see, she's denying her blackness. She hates being black and all this foolishness. And this is at this point in time, it's very embarrassing. Like the conversation that's constantly around race in America, it's starting to get embarrassing because at what point are people going to understand that the world does not evolve around America and America's racial issues? That's not really how the rest of the world works, okay? So Tyla then had to put out a, a letter um, on social media basically addressing the issue and letting people know that she's not denying her blackness. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what Tyler wrote. Tyler says, you guys, I never denied my blackness. I don't know where that came from. I mix with black, Zulu, Irish, Mauritian, Indian, and colored. 
In South Africa, I would be considered a colored woman and other places I would be classified as a black woman. Race is classified differently in different parts of the world. I don't expect to be identified as colored outside of South Africa by anyone not comfortable doing so because I understand the weight of the world outside of South Africa. But to close this conversation, I'm both colored in South Africa and a black woman. As a woman for the culture, it's and not or, with that being said, a sambi. So that is what she had to say about the situation. And I just think it's sad that once again, this young girl has to state the obvious. I remember a few months ago, she was really upset on social media and said, can we stop talking about my race and talk about my music? So let me go ahead and kind of break this down for people who don't understand, because we've had this discussion in the past here on this channel. And um, we talked about, you know, people who are African, Caribbean versus African American. I don't get involved in the diaspora wars. I think the diaspora wars are bullshit and it's for people who just wanna go viral and who are looking for rage baiting. I don't do that here on my channel. But let me go ahead and explain to you guys. Um, like I've said before on this channel, everybody does not identify as black, okay? Outside of America, most people consider black, the word black is tied to African Americans, okay? Because that's how a lot of African Americans in America identify. A lot of times they'll say that they're black. So when you hear the word black, you know, okay, that's African American. This is why when you ask somebody who's African or Caribbean and you say, well, you're black and they say, no, I'm not. They're not saying that to be offensive to African Americans. They're saying that because, because outside of America, everybody else identifies with their tribe or ethnicity. Okay. That is why when you ask people outside of America or who are not African American, you're going to get responses like this. When you ask people what they are or where they're from, you're going to hear them say, I'm Jamaican. I'm Bahamian, I'm Liberian, I'm Nigerian. They're not gonna say black because a lot of times they look black or they have brown skin, so that goes without saying. That is why many other cultures outside of America, they lead with their ethnicity first, and then if they're in certain parts of Africa, then the next step is by identifying your tribe. And that's when you'll get, hey, I'm Nigerian, but I'm Yoruba, I'm Igbo, I'm Hausa, I'm Fulani. So it goes really deep. So it's not that people don't want to claim that they're black to be, you know, offensive or to be mean or to think they're better than. That's not how it is. How we were raised, you identify with your ethnicity first. And then if you're African, like I said, then you go into your tribe. We were never raised to identify as black because black is just a color to most people outside of America. So what is going on in South Africa is that what people don't understand is that outside of the Zulus and the Koshan people and stuff like that, there is a huge Indian population. White Dutch people lived in South Africa. They had perpetuated apartheid. So you have a whole um, community there in South Africa of biracial multi-ethnic mixed people who are called colored, okay? That is the term that they are called. That is the term that they use for themselves. That is the term that is politically correct in South Africa. Tyla, when I look at Tyla, I don't even see black. To me, she looks like a, a Indian woman, gorgeous. I don't even really see any black ancestry in her. When I look at her parents, to me, they look full Indian. You know what I'm saying? Like when I look at Tyla next to Indian people, I feel like phenotypically, that's where she fits in. It's been so interesting over the last few weeks watching Americans realize that they aren't the center of the world, that they aren't the cultural be all and end all. It's so hard for them to grasp that people around the world are not centering their identities on American narratives, that people have ethnic groups and cultures that are different to theirs. What's also been shocking is how they've been denying people of these cultures and ethnicity. When people say, when people from South Africa say, I am colored, that means something different than it does in America. People explained it and explained it. And this discourse has been happening way before Thailand. And yet, it continues. They want us to erase our entire culture, the word colored, because they are uncomfortable with it. Is it really so hard to understand that in South Africa, there is a group of people who have mixed ancestry and we have called ourselves colored. Is that really so hard to grasp? She looks more Indian than anything, but she has, you know, a multiracial background 
And that is how they classify her in South Africa. And that is also how she classifies herself. And, you know, I think it's really sad that people continue to try to force people to be in a box because of their own insecurities or whatever issues they have. And I, I never understood that, even with the whole biracial topic here in America. You know, to say that somebody who's biracial is black is silly. That is just perpetuating the one drop rule. Why should somebody who's biracial have to deny half of themselves and then they get to play both sides of the fence and then people get mad? I think, um, you know, it's, it's nice to see slowly that the industry is slowly opening up the doors to people of color being, you know, in leading roles or just being featured at all. I think it's so important for young people to be able to see themselves in a character. I definitely don't say I have the same challenges as a darker skin black woman because I don't, but I do like to take my privileges that I have as a lighter skinned black woman and help them and shine light on those issues because I think that's important and that we should constantly uplift each other and push for acceptance. So when they're looking for a black role, right, then now you have to compete with somebody who's not phenotypically black, um, who's biracial, who can play both sides. Because now they can go up for black roles, they can go up for light skin roles, and they can also go up for biracial roles. But if somebody is phenotypically black, and I'm talking about phenotype, you know, the nose, the kinkier hair texture, they're not going to be allowed to... And especially if they're brown skin, they're not going to be allowed to go and even audition for roles that are lighter skin, biracial or racially ambiguous. So when you try to put everybody in one box, it really takes opportunities away from people who are phenotypically black. Addressing colorism on its own when we have conversations about black attractiveness politics is not enough. And I'll tell you why. If you didn't see, I posted this TikTok. It was supposed to be funny. I still think it's funny where I was basically pointing out that if I went to a casting call, I'm definitely not going to get it if Storm Reid, Garshahidi, and Zendaya are in a room. And of course, people in the comments point out the obvious, which is that colorism will probably play a role in that. And before I get into what I want to say, let me preface this with this conversation has little to do with how good of actresses these women are. Um, I think we can all objectively agree that these are good actresses and we have nothing against them personally. But I do want to use that lighthearted comedic TikTok that I posted as a framework to actually address colorism, featurism, and texturism. All of these systemic structures factor into how Black women are received in media. And I think that when we only address colorism, we're leaving this really big space that a lot of Black women, a lot of light-skinned Black women exist in. When we talk about attractiveness politics in the black community specifically around black women and we talk about colorism we usually touch on the fact that light-skinned women can be the preference amongst black people and non-black people but there is another section where being black and being light-skinned have one other circle and that's like okay you might be light-skinned but you're not mixed you might be light-skinned but you might be phenotypically black you could be light-skinned and you could be fat light skin doesn't equal mixed race so so people are pointing out like yeah yara shahidi and zendaya are mixed but storm reed is not it can't all be lumped into one category of experiences because they're not all light skin and mixed they're not all light skin with a certain hair texture i hate that this is how it is but it's true like i don't think that all light skinned women have the same experience just because they're light skin we literally have so many structures acting against us as black women that we can't compare our Zazie Beats to our Storm Reed or a Storm Reed to Zendaya or a Zendaya to a Tessa Thompson. Like, it just goes on and on and on. So I never understood that whole putting people in a box and saying, you're just black, no matter how you look, no matter how light your eyes are, how light your skin is, your hair texture. I, I just, the one drop rule to me is just really crazy. That is how Rachel Dolezal was able to play it off and pretend to be a black woman. So I just think it's really sad that um, people are putting all this pressure on this young girl. She's not denying her blackness. She's not trying to disrespect African-Americans. She's representing her heritage and her heritage is colored. And people need to understand that the world does not revolve around America. And I get that in African-American culture, um, 
colored, right? That word has like a lot of negative connotation because of like the Jim Crow South and colored bathrooms and colored drinking fountains. You know, I get that, but she's not African American. So for her, that's a whole different term. The term colored is offensive here to African Americans. It's not offensive to many people around the world. A lot of people in Brazil and in other countries where there's a high population of biracials, they also use terms like colored and stuff like that. Kyla has sparked controversy after referring to herself as being colored. At some point, African Americans decided to reclaim the N word and instead have chosen to use it as a term of endearment. The N word has been historically used to degrade and oppress Black people across the globe, not just Americans. But despite this, us non American Black people have accepted that Americans have chosen to de empower the word and instead integrate it into their culture, into their music, into their daily lives. And so it really confuses me what exactly is the issue Americans have with referring to Tyler as a colored. The N word is offensive and derogatory to every Black person across the globe. The term colored is only offensive to African Americans. Now, I, as a South African, understand that because of American history, African Americans prefer to be called people of color and not colored people. So I'm very confused about why African Americans do not understand that Tyler is not biracial, she's not black, she's colored. She is a South African colored. And there are a group of coloreds in South Africa. And that to South Africans, that term is not offensive. And she's also not choosing to identify herself as colored. That is who she is. What is so difficult about understanding this? Where is the disconnect? What exactly is the problem? Oh, and some people might argue that they refuse to refer to Tyler as a colored in America because the term colored is offensive in America. However, American artists tour the world and use the N-word and everybody just accepts it and respects that that is part of their culture. So why can you not do the same for Tyler? What is the difference? What is the issue? What is the problem? Well, that didn't take long at all. Tyler has already responded via her IG, her Instagram, and she says that she has never denied her blackness, okay? She said that in South Africa, she is considered a colored, and everywhere else in the world, she's considered black. How interesting. <laughs> hey, but you know what? Like, like I said, us black Americans... You know, we see everybody as black and we do have to kind of draw back from that because it seems as if other places in the world, they don't see things the way that we do and they do consider themselves to be Kenyan. We black Americans will look at all black people, no matter where you're from, Haiti, Jamaica, Kenya, Senegal, we'll be like, oh, they're black. We just bunch you in with everybody else. And clearly they don't want to be bunched in. So let them have that. I respect that she's colored, but I just wish that she would have said what she wrote on this letter in the interview. Why not just say it in the interview? Explain it in the interview. Peace. Meet Tyler. How do I know that her name is Tyler? Because hey, it's Tyler. That's how she self-identifies. Among many other wonderful things, Tyler is a South African colored woman. Not black, not biracial, colored. That's colored in South Africa and colored here in the United States. Despite the fact that many black Americans don't want to call Tyler colored because of our own negative association with the term colored during segregation. But you see, South Africa had their own segregation called apartheid. Apartheid was a white supremacist power structure. And in the context of white hegemony, there are certain social privileges that come along with proximity to whiteness. While colored South Africans are generationally mixed, one can be colored in South Africa without being the child of an interracial couple. So you see, if Tyler were to kowtow to the sensibilities of black Americans and refer to herself around the world as a black woman, she would run the risk of offending black South Africans who know and have experienced the difference between being black and colored in South Africa. Remember that race itself is a social construct and there are many societies around the world. Are Dominicans black? Are Panamanians black? Are indigenous Australians black? Are Somalians black or Egyptians? Are Eritreans Seychellois black? These are all questions that are often debated, but the answer all depends on which colonial context you subscribe to. Because ironically, you know who's not black? Black people, because it was Dwight Mann who invented race in the first place and quite literally branded us these labels. Relax and remember, we all we got.
But yeah, I just think this is really sad. And I think Charlamagne was being very messy for this because she's been trying to stay away from this topic for a while now because every time this topic comes up, she gets drugged. And it should really just be about the music. I enjoy her music. I think she's a sweet girl. She seems very unproblematic. Um, and she's trying to toe the line. And then you had some people saying that she's cosplaying a black woman. And I'm just like, well, I don't see how, because when I look at her, she looks Indian to me. You know what I'm saying? And she has a very strong, even her accent sounds more Indian than it even sounds South African. You know what I mean? So I don't think she's cosplaying anything. I just think she's a young girl wearing braids, you know, being beautiful, having fun, dancing and making good music. So it's just really sad that it's gotten to this point. And I, you know, and I also remember how they were kind of treating Amara La Negra during that conversation on The Breakfast Club when she was talking about, when she was trying to explain, you know, the whole Afro-Latina situation and they were like really kind of bullying her and really talking down to her. And I felt like Amara should have stood up more and really explained it better. Like I've seen people like Juju, who is a dark-skinned um, Cubana. You know, she's a dark-skinned Cuban Afro-Latina. And the way she breaks down the Afro-Latina identity is immaculate. Your hair is too nappy. Yeah. And, you know, you need to be more... Well and less, you know, wait, 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 he wait, was what? on that type because of note. your hair was nappy? Basically, yeah. We're Afro-Latinas, we're here to stay, and we have little girls looking up to us. Don't think because I'm doing this wig line, girl, that I don't let my Afro out, and I go out to the street, wash and go, and my hair just sticks. I ain't watching you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I go to the gym with my hair, ya tu sabe, because I'm proud of my roots, and my yeah. parents didn't come here to the United States to so forget that side. You know, I'm Afro-Cuban, I'm Afro-Latina, right. and that is what it is. There are black people and people of color all over the world all over the world, you know what I'm saying? And they identify in different ways and we need to respect other people's cultures. Everybody does not have the same mentality as people do here in America. You know, you can go to places like Brazil and there's literally 50 different categories. You know, they can place you in a category depending on the color of your eyes, your hair texture, your nose, you know? So everything is not so black and white globally. So I, I suggest that people do more traveling or getting to know other people. You know, just really educate yourself, especially when you're calling yourself a fan of somebody's art. Really try and find out their background. You know, where they come from, what makes them. You know, don't just assume because maybe phenotypically you might think she's a light-skinned woman and you might, you know, in your eyes think that she's black. That's not always the case. That could be an Afro-Latina. That could be a colored person. So I always try to expound your horizons and get to know more about that person and their ethnic makeup than just assuming, you know? And, and we need to stop taking offense to everything. You know, just understand that people are just people, you know? And people see themselves how they see themselves and they identify with how they identify, and that is okay. So I hope you guys get this message and understand where I'm coming from with this. Like I said, I, I've been asked to talk about this before, and I'm just like, no, eventually the internet will wake up. But after this whole debacle on The Breakfast Club, I couldn't do nothing but shake my head. And Charlemagne was very messy for even putting her in that situation. It seemed like the, the interview itself from a lot of the snippets I've seen, she just seemed very uncomfortable with a lot of the questions that she was being asked. But again, I leave the conversation up to you guys. I want to hear y'all's opinion on this whole situation. How do you feel about Tyla basically saying that she's colored? And how do you feel about many people on the internet being mad about that and saying that she's black and she's denying her blackness? And then how do you guys feel about like just the whole conversation around the black race in general and what makes somebody black and how people identify and how sometimes people get offended if you say you're not black, but that you're Liberian or Nigerian or, you know, Haitian or Jamaican, you know? So yeah, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Again, it's about respect on this channel. We're not gonna turn this comment section into the diaspora wars. We're not doing that. But you know, I do want us to have an open and honest dialogue and I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. So I will talk to you guys later. So hopefully I'll do a live stream tomorrow. I can't wait to see you guys. I'll talk to y'all later. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show.